It is an absolute joy to be with you all this morning. Uh, I must say that I'm the one that is privileged. I'm the one and my family and our country are recipients of your generosity and of your love that you show by encouraging us, by supporting us financially, and by being, as I said earlier during our uh, Bible study time, being the wind in our sails and just driving us on, pushing us forward. Uh, we have lofty goals for the work in South Africa, and uh, the, the, the work is enormous. Uh, you know, here in, um, in the United States, you cannot drive through a town and not find the Lord's Church represented uh, over the, uh, these United States of America. And there are some regions in South Africa where you would be hard-pressed to find a congregation of the Lord's people. So this is indeed a great blessing. Didn't you just love the singing this morning? Man, I enjoyed the singing. And it's amazing that we, uh, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, we sing these same songs. You know, we sing these same wonderful songs about evangelism, about seeking the lost, about going afar, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, it would be remiss of me not to mention my gracious hosts. I'm staying with the Hayes. I'm in the Hayes Hilton. And uh, they are so good to me. I feel like I'm at home every time that I come here. I really do. I feel like I'm at home. I, I miss my family. And um, I'd like to bring them along one time so that you can meet them, so that you can see I really, really do have a family. It's not something that I've made up. <laughs> they are real. So, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful to them as well for their support. Because as you know, without a, a loving and a loyal and a committed spouse, there's no way that we could do the work that we do uh, in Southern Africa. I'd also like to say thank you to... Uh, to the elders and the deacons and the leadership and the congregation, uh, the missions team and everyone who plays a part, uh, no matter how small or how big, in making uh, missions possible all over the world. A big, big thank you uh, to all of you. So today is Mission Sunday, yay! And I'm sure everyone is excited uh, about Mission Sunday. This is a, an opportunity that we have uh, to be a part of expanding the work that we do. Uh, I think of, uh, has this clicker gone and died? <laughs> let's just check. I'll put it off now, haven't I? All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, so there's my family right there, okay? So uh, that's not Photoshopped. I haven't added myself in uh, to, that <coughs> to, to, to that picture of that beautiful family. Uh, 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 as I said, my wife is a tremendous supporter of, uh, of the work. And uh, my daughter, Kayla, is 19. She is studying to become an actress. Um, I didn't want her to do that. I wanted her to do something else. Uh, but I could tell that she has a passion for what she's doing. And so uh, she knows that the kind of roles that she will be playing will be very limited uh, in terms of what is available out there. And then my little boy, Zach, is nine years old. Zach wants to be baptized. So we're talking to him about the gospel. He doesn't know what sin is yet. So uh, we, we need to study with him some more. So uh, please pray for him. He's a, he's a young preacher in training, and uh, he loves the Lord, and uh, he, um, he has some keen insights uh, as young as he is. So uh, as we, we listen to Brother Greg read that text for us so eloquently, uh, I'm just going to reread Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, uh, about the way that Paul feels about the church at Philippi. He had them in his heart. They were his favorite congregation. Uh, he had a close relationship with them because they participated in his life, not just in taking care of his needs, but they participated in his very life. And he had them in his heart. He says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. Some versions say, whenever I remember you, uh, always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership and this is what it is this is a partnership that we have in the gospel uh, from the first day until now and uh, this is our 11th year with uh, the Keller family so it really has been a tremendous privilege uh, and a tremendous honor to be associated with uh, the, uh, the, the, the Keller family um, just to back up a bit uh, things in South Africa 
are worse than what they were 10 years ago. Things in South Africa are a whole lot worse. Uh, uh, if you were to Google, and I'm going to probably tell you a little bit about that later on, uh, you're going to find that most of the news coming out of South Africa is bad. But what makes South Africa good is that the gospel is in South Africa. What makes South Africa good is that the church of Christ, the church for which Christ died, is represented in this country. And so if you look at the map of Africa on your screen, you'll see that's us right at the bottom there. Uh, we are right at the tip of Africa, but uh, it's a spreading flame that is spreading from the tip of Africa going north and north-northeast and north-northwest. So recently an elder, one of the uh, elders at the Somerset West Congregation, sent me a short video clip of our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa, and he was leading a chorus at a denominational uh, group, at a denom denominational church, and I, I didn't want to put the chorus uh, up on the, uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the overhead and play it for you because I didn't want to, uh, to give any advertising to uh, any denomination. But the president stood up and he led this chorus, uh, and the, the words of this chorus uh, went something like this. If I can get... Okay, there we go. If you believe and I believe and we together pray, if you believe and I believe and we together pray, then Africa will be saved. When I, when I saw that video clip and, and, and saw him leading the singing at this church, it gave me a shot in the arm to think that we finally have a president that says that we need to pray for Africa to be saved. And so I believe the, there are little green shoots in South Africa. They are small, they are tiny, but they are there. And I believe if we water those shoots, if we, if we cultivate those shoots, I believe that the Lord's people, the Lord's church, can make a difference not only in South Africa, but also in Southern Africa and even further beyond. Currently, right now, um, the congregation that we're still at, the Somerset West Congregation, uh, we have um, missionaries that have been taught and trained at the School of Preaching there that are working as far north as in Nigeria in Central Africa, in Zimbabwe, and also uh, in Malawi. So already it's starting. It, it, it's, it's, um, uh, 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 the, the winds of change are coming to our country and to our continent. So a little bit of history about us, for those who don't know. God placed us at the Central Church of Christ in 2006 uh, when we came out of school. That is the Southern Africa Bible College. I proudly wear this, uh, this coat because it has the badge of the school, uh, of the college, on the front pocket. Uh, because I am a graduate of this Bible college and also uh, I, I'm on the board of trustees as well, which is a, a tremendous privilege as well. So we were placed there 2006. We spent nine years there. And by God's grace, we were able to build up a congregation that was struggling. Uh, there, there were no more young people. Uh, there were probably about a dozen or so uh, senior members. All the children had gone, uh, had grown up and left. And so there was no youth. There was no Sunday school program. And uh, by God's grace, we were able to build it up. And I think that was about the time that Brother Corey came to Cape Town. It was either 2005 or 2006, Brother Corey? 2006. And I met him and Brother Bill Bajans for the first time at the Belleville Congregation and not knowing that we would be partners in the gospel uh, later on, uh, God really has mysterious ways in which he works. So we are really privileged uh, to know Brother Corey and Sister Tanya. Uh, they are such wonderful, encouraging people and very, very wise as well. I appreciate Brother Corey's wisdom. So before we left, uh, that is the Central Congregation in, in 2015, the congregation was running well with an average attendance of 160 members in regular attendance. And uh, some of the things that we also did while we were there, we sent off several men uh, uh, for training to the Southern Africa Bible College, one of whom is Patrick, who preaches from a wheelchair. Uh, I know there's a, uh, there's a preacher on Facebook that I've met, I believe is a Don Blackwell, uh, that uh, was in a motorcycle accident. and. Uh, and continues to preach even though he's in a wheelchair. So that's Patrick right there. And just very quickly, uh, Brother Patrick came to me about eight years ago, uh, and he was working 
uh, very odd hours. He would work something like 13 weeks on, meaning every single day, every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, for 13 weeks. And then he would have one weekend off in which he could attend the services of the church. And it really ate him up from inside. It, it really killed him. And he came to me and he said, Brother Ben, I want to be an evangelist. Uh, I want to go to, to Bible college uh, and study. I don't know when this is going to happen. But to cut a long story short, about four weeks later, I got a phone call immediately after the, uh, the morning service. I got a phone call that Brother Patrick was lying in hospital. He had been involved in a train wreck. And what had happened was, as he was ex exiting this train, his backpack got caught in the doors as it closed. And uh, he was unable to extricate himself. And uh, what he finally did as the train was moving along, he slipped his arms out of the backpack. And uh, he fell between the platform and the train, this train which was picking up speed. And uh, this accident, it, it, it was only God's grace that he did not die. His spine was broken, spinal cord severed. All of his ribs were crushed, broken, including both collarbones. And... Uh, I rushed to the hospital where he was admitted and he was lying in the trauma unit receiving uh, uh, care from the, uh, the doctors. He was being st stabilized and I'll never forget the statement he made. He could barely turn his head and he was grimacing in pain and he said, Brother Ben, I can still preach the gospel from a wheelchair. And he is one of the men that through the work of this congregation today is able to preach the gospel. He taught his son, Miles, the gospel, and I baptized, I had the privilege of baptizing Miles into Christ, but Patrick taught him the gospel, and he made good on his promise. And he is still at this congregation today. And he's one of several, I can tell you several stories, but the reason why I highlighted Patrick's story is because it is so unusual. It is so extraordinary. And so Patrick encourages me because of his commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, there's another <coughs> brother there, that's Brother William Tengani. He wor works in the Port Elizabeth area. He's also a graduate of SABC. And we are in regular contact. I just saw him at the Benoni Lectureship in, uh, in Johannesburg. And uh, part of my work is to not only send these men for training, but to stay with them throughout that three-year program and to help them to get into areas of service, works of service, where the gospel can be preached and where souls can be saved. So Brother William regularly sends me pictures uh, of him. That's him and his family and the, the church. This picture on your left there, that's him and his wife sitting. Uh, and uh, this is the church in uh, an area called Utenhaig that Brother William is helping to revive. So that's just a, a cross-section of the Somerset West congregation where I am right now. Uh, and we'll be there for a, a, approximately another three months before we move on. I'm very grateful to the Somerset West congregation because we have learned a lot. Uh, prior to this, we had not worked under an eldership, but at Somerset West, we've uh, been working under an eldership for the past five years. And so it was, uh, it was a good training ground for me and also to, to work in the school of preaching uh, and to also do counseling and do uh, marriage enrichment seminars, etc., etc. And this is a great, great congregation. And when I had to tell the, uh, the, the elders of the congregation that we will be uh, moving on, uh, uh, it was a very tender moment. Uh, I said to them, I'm not resigning. I'm we are relocating. Because I, I cannot see myself as uh, resigning. Where does one go to resign <laughs> from the Lord's church? And so we, uh, they accepted it. They have been very, very gracious toward us and very supportive. Uh, so that's a picture that was uh, taken when Brother Jeff and, uh, and Clarice, Sister Clarice visited with us. And that arrow back there, I'm sure you can see his smiling face. That's Brother Jeff back there when we took a, uh, a group picture of the student body and some of the faculty members. On the far le left, that is Brother Fred Berg. Uh, please pray for him. He has uh, some health challenges. He had a hip replacement that went wrong. And so please pray for him. Uh, and pray for our leadership because uh, there are many, many gray-haired uh, leaders in, um, uh, in, in, in South Africa. And so there's a, a, a transition, if you will, that's taking place in South Africa where the older, uh, uh, the older leaders 
are giving way due to health and due to uh, uh, you know, those kinds of, of difficulties to the younger men uh, like myself and others and pushing us forward. So the Benoni congregation is where we will be headed within the next three months. Uh, and uh, that's just a recent picture of the congregation. This is before the lectureship. And you can see that there are many empty benches and pews. And so the congregation has been dwindling from a once thriving congregation of about 400 members. Uh, it has dwindled to uh, some Sunday mornings below 200. Also, the young people are struggling. Uh, the, um, the, the youth are also, are also struggling. They, um, they need leadership. Uh, they need to be led. They need to be encouraged. Uh, the Sunday school as well. And again, I want to thank God for, for Mel because she has got such a, uh, she's got such a heart for the little ones. My wife is one of those uh, ladies that if you had a baby on your arm and she was walking by, uh, if you didn't take notice before you knew it, uh, that baby would be in her arm. And you would be looking, hey, what happened? Where's my baby gone? Uh, she just has this thing about babies. And uh, she just loves children, and she loves teaching and developing them. And uh, she loves teaching the younger sisters how to teach, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the kiddies, the, the children's roles. So uh, we are excited, but we are also, um, uh, we, we, we also feel the weight. We feel it, it, it's quite a daunting thing. Because the, uh, the preacher and his wife that are now bowing out, they have been there for over 50 years. In fact, they were part of the establishment of the Benoni congregation. And so they are well loved, Brother Al Horn and Donna Horn. Uh, I think they'll be placing membership here. Don't quote me. But I think that's what's going to be happening. Uh, they are going to be uh, settling here permanently because of their health issues. So the Benoni church has been looking for a preacher for some years. And uh, I did mention some of the things, some of the challenges already, but they're looking for someone to help grow the congregation, to help bring back stability and to, uh, to build up the ministries, especially the youth, the young adults, uh, and also the, uh, the, the, the children's uh, uh, Sunday school uh, groups as well. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if this has been fed through into the congregation, but one of the things that has really interested me over the last uh, number of years is the effect of social media on our children, on, on young people. I mean, you guys know how, uh, how, how, how dangerous social media can be. Uh, social media is an effective tool. It's so great to be able to, to take out your phone and, and send a message or, uh, or put something on Instagram or something on Facebook. It's an excellent, excellent tool, but it is also very, very dangerous. And so there are, there are lots of challenges with that. So I would like to help our our young adults and our teens back in South Africa to, to teach them on the effects of social media and the dangers of, uh, of these things. They are good things if used properly, but they are also dangerous if not used properly. <clears throat> One of the things, as Brother Jeff mentioned, uh, I cannot find the words to express how I feel about the Southern Africa Bible College. It has changed my life. And it has changed the lives of so, so many people. And just to be involved with the Bible College is an absolute joy. It is a privilege. It is an honor uh, because we are helping others not only to change their lives, but also to change the lives of others. And so uh, this Bible College, which, by the way, is the only accredited Bible College in Southern Africa. There's only one like it, and you are a part of that. We have several Bible schools who, who do excellent work. I'm part of, of three Bible schools down uh, in the Cape Town area, and I love all of them uh, because of the work they are doing. But government gives uh, our Bible college, uh, the Southern Africa Bible College, uh, special status, if you will, because we comply with all the legalities that make us a Bible college and we are able to offer a Bachelor of Arts degree uh, in theology because of this. So uh, one of my roles will be to help with teaching and re recruiting, yes, recruiting big time. 
uh, and also to assist the congregations in the area. So you can see that the work is bigger than just the Benoni congregation. It is, um, it is a, a multifaceted and multi-pronged work, which I see over the years, God in His grace and God in His kindness toward me, He has taken me down several roads to equip me, as it were, for this role which I and my family, my family and I, are about to occupy in the uh, country of South Africa. So it is a, it's a tremendous privilege, but it's also a burden, as Brother Jeff put it, and not a burden in the sense that it's something that I'm, I, I'm struggling with and something that's holding me back. No, it's a burden because I realize the weight of what God has prepared for us. So uh, our relocation challenges in a nutshell right now, it's probably the worst time to relocate because property prices are at an all-time low. Um, we are struggling to sell our house. Uh, and besides all of that, uh, uh, you know, the crime is, is high and, and everything is high, inflation is high, um, food prices are, are exorbitant and, and that kind of thing. And we, we see the, the, the prices are changing weekly. I do most of the grocery shopping. So I, I see how our food bill has, um, it has probably doubled in the past three or four years. Food prices have doubled. But it is also a time of opportunity for us. It's a time <clears throat> when people are going through challenges in their lives, they tend to be more receptive to the gospel. People tend to, to want to know where is the hope. Remember that Peter spoke about it in 2 Peter chapter 3 when he spoke about this hope that we have within us to be able to tell someone about that hope with reverence and with respect. So I'm excited because it is a time of tremendous, tremendous opportunity. The economy is terrible. Unemployment is at 50%. Uh, government says it, it's, uh, it's about 30%, but it's actually not. Because uh, just in, in our, uh, our young people, people in the ages, be between the ages of 18 to 24, more than 50% of young adults in that age range find themselves in the unemployment line. In fact, some have even given up hope of finding work because it is very difficult to enter the job market when you have no experience and nothing to offer. Um, crime is out of control. Every three hours, someone is murdered. Uh, you might have seen in the news headlines recently that uh, uh, there's a thing going on in South Africa called femicide, which uh, has, um, uh, you know, which is a, a, a crime on women, the murder of women. Uh, and there's been several violent protests and, and um, you know, protest mass action against this kind of thing. Uh, corruption has also depleted our state treasury, so our country is just about bankrupt in every sense of the word. But yet the gospel continues to flourish. So we have been committed to being in Benoni by the end of November, latest mid-December of this year. Uh, we are trying to, as I mentioned earlier, sell our house, and we have to relocate and, and find ourselves a, a new place to stay in the Benoni area. So what's our vision for 2020? And I, I looked at this, you know, opto optometrists or opticians say that perfect vision is 2020 vision. I believe God has got perfect vision because, because God's vision is to save the world. That's God's vision. God has got 2020 vision. So we already have 20 new first-year students enrolled for uh, 2020 at the Bible College, but we have capacity for 50. We can do a whole lot better than what we are currently doing. Uh, I was thinking of, I think it was Michelangelo, the great sculptor and painter, I beg your pardon, who uh, was teaching a student. The student was given a block of marble, and he was chipping away at the block of marble, but the work was of a small stature. It was a small uh, sculpture. And Michelangelo walked in and, 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 and looked at the work of art, the sculpture. He looked at his student and he said, Amplius, Amplius, meaning bigger, greater. And that's how I feel. I feel that the work we are currently doing is too small. It needs to be amplified. And so this is why we have opportunities like these, like Mission Sunday, so that we can amplify the work in the Southern Africa region. And you and I will never know, we will never know to what degree our contributions 
have contributed to the work, not only in South Africa, but all of the other works around the world that you are engaged in. Now, I'm out of time, so I'm going to run along very quickly now. Uh, the goal is to help local congregations by getting the students to assist them with outreach. Uh, and also, SABC can also help with uh, evangelistic campaigns in unreached rural areas. I mentioned the Northern Cape in South Africa, which is a whole state, if you will. It's the biggest province of South Africa, not one Church of Christ in that particular area. And so, in one of my future reports, I hope to report on the fact that we have started a new work in that area and that it is flourishing jesus said in his vision for the world go into all the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything that i have commanded you in conclusion this is a very exciting time for us sabc and the benoni church are very eager to have us uh, it sounds like they're more eager than what we are. Everybody that we have met there during the lecture trip now has said, Oh, we're excited to, to have you guys come. When are you coming? When will you be with us? And so they have fed our excitement and our eagerness uh, to be there and to work with uh, the Lord's Church in that uh, area as well as with the Bible College. Just a quick one. The Bible College and the Benoni Congregation, geographically, they are less than five miles apart. So you can see how we will work very closely together and how uh, we will uh, literally every day be doing something together. So as I said earlier, it's a very daunting time for us. We are in constant need of your prayers. Early this morning when I got in and I met some of the brethren uh, and I told uh, the brother very quickly about what we were doing and I said, please pray for us. He said, we are. <laughs> you know, and I, I love that conviction that tells us that we are being prayed for. Uh, we need your continued partnership as well, and, and that we can get this amplified and so that we can reach more people. Jeff mentioned that my personal vision, and I wanted to have a T-shirt printed, you know, which said 100 men in ministry. But the statistics in our country are for us to get 100 totally committed men who will walk through the bush on broken glass to preach the gospel. To find a hundred men like that, I might have to find a thousand. I might have to find a thousand in order to get a hundred committed men that will take South Africa for Jesus. So may God receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I had still much more to tell you this morning, but my time is up, and I don't want to be remiss uh, to take more of your time. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot of things on the agenda today. So I'm going to stop right here, but I would like to, to offer the Lord's invitation. Um, I'm, I'm going to just skip right over that illustration uh, right there because there's no time. But the Lord offers His invitation. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, the Lord Jesus says, Come unto me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is light. And you will find rest for your souls. And he also says that I am meek and lowly in heart. And so Jesus, our, our, our lowly Savior, extends the invitation. He says in, in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. He tells us very clearly what the order is for salvation. The formula, if you will, belief plus obedience and baptism equals salvation. And so Jesus extends that invitation. If there's anyone here today that, that needs to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins and to receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ extends that invitation to us today. But if you are weary and burdened and you are struggling with something, the elders are here, the leadership is here, we can pray with you and for you. Sometimes people feel embarrassed, they feel ashamed because of what they're going through. But hey, my hand is up. I'm standing at the front Already, I've already asked for prayer. And so if you need prayers, we can pray with you and we can pray for you. Uh, there's a song that has been selected and uh, that song will be led in a moment. So uh, please, will you uh, stand with me as the song is being led and make your need known and the elders can help you and we can pray with you.